Almighty God. Lord, you are holy, Jesus. Good morning, church. Let me try that again. Good morning, church. Uh, if nobody has already, let me be the first to welcome you to Iuka First United Pentecostal Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. You know, I find that no matter how many times I get up here, I still get nervous. Yes, sir. If we would, uh, let's go into prayer for this service right now. If you would, raise your hands. Let's go before the Lord right now. Oh, Lord God, I come before you, Jesus. Grateful to be in your house one more time, God. I pray, oh, Lord God, that you would move mightily in this place. I pray, oh, Lord God, that you would sit down in this atmosphere, Father. In Jesus' name, God, I pray, God, for an unprecedented move in this place, God. In Jesus' name, Father, I claim it right now. I worship you and I praise you, Jesus, God, for what you're going to do in this house, God, for the chains you're going to break, God, for the bondage you're going to destroy. In Jesus' name, Father, thank you, O Lord God, how you're going to move. In Jesus' name. At this time, we would like to go into friendly time, so if you would, if you feel comfortable, Get out of your pew, go across church, find somebody, shake their hand, welcome them to church, and worship with the praise team.
Can you give that hand clap unto the Lord? We love you, Jesus. We worship you. We alabarle al Señor en esta mañana. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Y si ha sido bueno con ustedes, la gloria y honra. If he's been good to you. Hallelujah, giving word. Hallelujah. The Lord has been good, to, so good to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This morning, we're going to pray for our life recovery. Our city, for Bishop Dwight and his family, and the church in Selby as well. Let's remember Brother Keith Valentine. Um, I think he was going to surgery this morning. Let's pray that the Lord help the surgeons to do it well as well. I believe the Lord is working on his life. Amen. Pray that the Lord continue working in his life. Let's remember all his family. That the Lord give him peace and rest and comfort. Let's remember for revival. And of course, let's remember our first pastor. Our, our first pastor. <laughs> our first lady and our pastor. Remember Mama Lorenzo as well. And all the requests. But let's just for a little bit Hands. Uh, can I do it in Spanish? <laughs> Lord Jesus, we love you. We worship you. We give you glory and honor and praise. Thank you, Lord. We come before your presence knowing that you're an almighty God, O oh Lord. Lord, I ask you this morning, O oh Lord Jesus. Pray, brother, keep the Lord as the surgeon, O so Lord, as he gone into the room, O oh Lord. Yes, I give you glory and honor and praise, O Lord. I declare victory, O Lord. I declare healing in the life, O Lord Jesus, of Brother Keith. I declare revival in this city, O Lord Jesus. O Sheba Rabasa. I speak new anointing upon my pastor and Mama Lambert, O Lord Jesus. O Sereboko Sandarabahaye. O Sherebasaye de Kandaria. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we declare victory this morning? Can we declare healing this morning? Hallelujah. Whatever situation you're going through, there is nothing impossible for the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give a hand clap of victory. Hallelujah. And a shout of praise unto him. If I wrote about your love, I'd run out of paper. And if I sing about your mercy, I'd run out of breath. There's not enough painting in the world to paint a picture of your splendor.
get to do the good part if I could get some ushers you know I was just thinking about it I told brother Paul the other day I went to go do a sidekick because I'll just tell you all about investments when I was about 32 young boys y'all hear me y'all couldn't have caught me not a single one of y'all when I was in the Air Force about I wasn't even in my 20s I was in my 30s and I was in shape I'm telling you I could Elizabeth, nobody could catch me in 40 yards. Nobody. I used to train with marathoners, and I would just out of the gate blast them away, and they couldn't catch up to me. And then about two miles, they, they just run right past me, of course, because they were marathon runners. I lifted weights. I did all, I mean, I drank water. And it, when you're a veteran, you, you, you compare each other by the color of your pee, right? How, how hydrated can you be? I took care of my body. And I tried to do a sidekick the other day, and Brother David, I thought I was going to die. My hip gave out on me. I nearly fell flat on my face. I was writhing in pain, Brother Tulin, and I'm not even yet 50. So I say all that to say you can invest in a lot of things in your life. But the other day I got praise reports from every church that I've ever been in. My pastor out in Colorado is now the district superintendent. His church has grown by leaps and bounds. Every single dollar I ever put in an offering plate has come back. The church that I was part of in Germany, for seven years we helped it build. Now they're part of a Spanish-speaking work. He's the district superintendent for the Spanish-speaking you know, people out there in Germany and all over the German-speaking nations. We used to run youth camps like crazy. I see people out there now, there's a popular meme going around and my buddy that I used to be out there and I was teaching him in youth camp now he's one of the youth pastors out there every single dollar hour minute anything I've ever put into the kingdom of God has come back a hundredfold because God blesses his people when we bless him it's not about if it's just about when so I encourage you today be encouraged in this. I don't care if it's a dollar. You might be the widow's might putting in, but I promise you it will come back to you. Join me in prayer.
magnify be lifted up. I wonder, can we lift him up and allow the drawing power of God to get a hold of your situation, to get a hold of your family member, to get a hold of a backslider, to get a hold of a lost individual? Can we lift him up that the drawing power would reach beyond what you can do and do what only he can do today? Shake hands with your neighbor. Tell him I'm so glad to see you in the presence of the Lord today. You can be seated. We'll call this a 30-second intermission. How about that? We're so glad to have guests with us today. Again, to our guest, thank you for taking it out of your time to be with us. We are so honored to have you today. And we've got Sister Alyssa's mom that's here today, and we're so excited to have her. She is on grandma duty today. I can see it's a real problem for her. I really do. Amen. I, I was telling someone uh, earlier that uh, I was over in this area on uh, fr Thursday or Friday night. I can't remember. I think it was Friday night. And I was worshiping in this area over here. And all of a sudden, I heard a baby going, Wah! I thought, what in the world is wrong with that kid? I turned around, and Abel was in uh, Brother Scott Wallace's arms. And he was looking around to everybody else that was worshiping. And his only response was, Wah! <laughs> you know, I had a brother-in-law like that one time. I remember when he was about, oh, 14, 12, 12 years old. He was about somewhere in that section right over there. And uh, in the middle of service, I hear him going, ah, just like that. My wife asked him, said, uh, what are you doing? He said, everybody else is screaming. I thought I would too. <laughs> I'm glad now he's filled with the Holy Ghost and he understands what that business is all about. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To other guests that are here, I think Sister Faith's got some guests that sneaked in on us, and we're glad to have them with us today. Ladies, make yourself at home in the presence of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I sure have been enjoying services the last few days. If you don't enjoy your part, say, God just shifted over there. Brother Lambert wants it. Amen. But we have been greatly honored to have uh, Bishop and Mama White. We've also been glad to have Brother Lincoln with us preaching machine in the making right there I'm telling you hallelujah we're glad now if you've seen the slingshot go up the road he and I have been trying it out the last few days making sure that it's working everything and I think we may have to do a little bit more adjustments and make sure it's working some more before he gets out of here uh, but we're so glad that he came uh, with Bishop Mama White made this trip and it's just been exciting to have them here. How many enjoyed service on Thursday and Friday night, did you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Appreciate the, the Lord delivering the word to the church both nights. I was so thankful that uh, you open your arms and allow other churches, other ministries to come and be ministered to at this time. There were people here that desperately needed a breakthrough. There were people here that desperately needed the touch of God. And I watched Friday night as people that were in desperate need of a breakthrough was getting exactly what God wanted them to have. Thank you to this great church for opening your arms and welcoming anybody and everybody to come and be a part of those services. I almost made a mistake with Helton. When I say that, I, it's, it's, I shouldn't say a mistake. Uh, the Lord told me twice, you go, you get that young man and you worship with him. And so I didn't listen the first time. I didn't listen the second time. And the Lord literally said, have I got to tell you a third time? I said, no, Lord, you don't have to tell me a third time. I bounded off the platform and went and got him. My mistake was, is I latched on to him. Because I latched on to a supersonic, hypersonic rocket when I did. At the time I made it, I realized both of us can't go down that road at the same time, so I let him go first, and my arm was stretched out there about three miles, I think, because he was already to the end by the time I made the corner. But uh, the Holy Ghost moved in a great way. And I do want to commend each and every one of you all for your investments, your sacrifice the last few days. This great church has pulled together some very tough times the last few days and done tremendous things. And I do want to say on behalf of myself and Sister Lambert, thank you so much for all that you've done. You have made impact not only on our lives, 
in the lives of this community, but people who have come and visited from other communities as well. This morning, uh, Brother Taraz has made mention that Brother Ballantyne is in surgery even as we speak right now. Uh, Sister Ballantyne called as he was being taken to surgery, and we had prayer this morning. But we need, I think, to have prayer for Sister Ballantyne, Sister Kara, Sister Amber, and Brother Elijah and their family today because the stretch from here to there is quite quite a stretch of being away and trying to take care of things. Uh, so with that, I wonder today, could we just stand to our feet and could we lift our hands? Could we ask God to minister to that great family today as they're in the pressures and the stress of this situation that's ongoing right now? God, I thank you for this wonderful family. Thank you, God, for their investments. Thank you, God, for their connections. Thank you, God, for all that you've done in and through them. I pray, God, that you would minister to them, Lord. As they have poured out, I pray, God, that you would pour out in their behalf today. Minister to them physically, emotionally, spiritually. I believe you, God, that your hands at work in that family today. We bless you and we thank you today. Hallelujah. As you stand today, remain standing. The praise team's coming back right now. Lead us in one more song right before we get into the word of the Lord today. Let's give our best today. The last day of homecoming 22. Why don't we just give it our best today? excited hallelujah anybody making plans hallelujah hallelujah while you remain standing I'm honored today turn this pulpit to the greatest preacher walking on God's green earth sure do love my pastor and I'm honored to have them here it's been interesting God's timing of all this business God is always perfect in his timing how many would welcome Bishop as right now he comes to preach to us today? If you would help him, God bless you today. God bless you. You can be seated for a few moments. Got a few things to take care of. And among them is to tell y'all how much I've enjoyed being here. I done made up my mind to like y'all. If you don't like me, I don't even like me, so I understand. But I'm thankful today uh, to get to be here. We'll tell you that I love uh, Brother and Sister Lambert and their family. I I was a young man. And now I've become an old man. And I have poured my spirit into the kingdom of God ever since I came to him loved people tried to invest in people but it's still really hard 
for me to accept the fact that people love me. And uh, if I believe anything in life, I believe Brother and Sister Lambert love me and my family, and I want to thank them today. I want to thank them. This church loves me because they love me. And I promise you, even today, I've spent time in prayer for you. I don't just pray for pastor. I pray for y'all. I pray for his wife. I pray for his kids and grandkids. And uh, their love and respect for me honors me more than I deserve. I mean that. I, uh, I am not a fan of Doug White. I'm a tremendous fan of Jesus. I am a tremendous fan of Jesus. And I appreciate the love this morning. Brother Lambert, I was studying, praying, didn't see it. Early this morning, he sent me a thing. I wanted to know if he could send somebody to get me and Lincoln some breakfast to take up there. Well, I didn't hear it. I was busy. and He was all from seeing people. I, I don't, I, it's, it's, it's hard for me to understand that because I, I live my life fearful that I'm imposing on somebody. Uh, speaking of that, it is good to have my beautiful wife with me. I like y'all, but not near as much as I like her. And uh, she's here. <clears throat> is this being live streamed? I hate live stream. I despise live stream. There's places that I get ready to go. I say, baby doll, you going with me? Mm -mm. No, no. And she's got the same excuse every time. Somebody got to stay here with the grandbabies. I said, Pamela, they've got parents. But if Ayuka comes up, baby, I, yes. And uh, so she, she loves y'all like I love y'all. It's been good to have my grandson with me. He is a clone of his father, who is a clone of me with a different hair color. And, uh, well, y'all laughing because my hair color has become a hidden secret. <laughs> Lincoln has discovered something y'all got here that we ain't got at home. He's discovered this thing called Jack's. I won't say we've been there a bunch of times but if Jax was a bingo game I've got enough receipts in my dash right now to scream bingo <laughs> he loves Jax and I gotta confess they chicken biscuits pretty good God bless you I do love you I feel a burden this morning feel a tremendous burden. Uh, I appreciate y'all helping me preach the first night about the creative order of God. Then Friday night, y'all nearly killed me. I'm old. I can't scream and jump and flip and fly. Dear God in heaven, I caught myself trying to stand up on your pulpit. But when you're a fat man, that ain't happening. I was in a church not far from here. I won't tell you where, because if you come up with a video, I'm casting the devil out of you. I got in such a big way preaching. They got chairs about half again that tall, I think. And, and we finally getting a good breakthrough. I got so excited, I took off running. And I jumped up in one of them preacher chairs, and I turned to say something to the church. It was right here. I jumped up and I turned to say something to the church and didn't realize the toes of my shoes had gone through the rungs in the back of the chair. Y'all ever heard of a belly flop before? Monitor flew one direction. I looked up, the microphone's coming down at me. When it did, I just snatched the microphone out of there, rolled over and got up, kept on preaching like I'd planned the whole thing. I told him if I'd have been smart, I'd have rolled around a little bit and act like I was rolling in the spirit. But honestly, at that point, 
Brother Lambert, I just didn't know what I had broken, so I wanted to get up and see if everything was all right. <clears throat> God bless you. Why don't you take your Bible? Stand with me. I have a confession to make. As much as I love Brother Lambert, this church, I know people who have ought against him this morning. Reckon I didn't know this was Pentecost Sunday when we scheduled this. My son will never let me forget the fact that I scheduled Pentecost Sunday to be somewhere else. <clears throat> They're having a big concert. I told him, I said, son, you don't need me anyway. I can't sing no more. He said, Dad, it's Pentecost Sunday. So we're expecting a great outpouring. We have a big concert every year. I'm, sometime this afternoon, I'm going to watch my service online because they're singing a bunch of new original songs, all you music folks that looking for new music. David and Bethany and the others have all put some stuff together. And uh, But until then, y'all just stuck with me. Genesis chapter number 37. Genesis chapter number 37. The Lord has dealt forcibly with me. Yesterday, the spirit of intuition came on me. The Lord gave me a plan for making Brother Lambert rich. And, uh, I came up with an invention and all he's got to do is apply the brain power and the materials and the, well, basically everything but the idea. <clears throat> Genesis chapter number 37 and verse number 23. says, and it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren that they stripped Joseph of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. They took him, and they cast him into a pit. Look, look closely now. They cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty, and there was no water in it. Later, Jeremiah begins to tell us in the second chapter, be astonished, be greatly afraid, for my people have committed two evils. They've forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. And now they're trying to survive on broken cisterns that can hold no water. I'm going to need you to help me today. A couple Tuesdays ago, I was getting ready to teach a Bible study and I knew that Bible study was going to be snug. I knew I was going to be straight on some stuff, some sound foundational stuff. I woke up that morning, wee hours of the morning, the instant I opened my eyes, God began to speak to me. God said, the problem with my people is not because of what they have or have not done. Okay. God said, the problem with my church now is that my preachers have ceased preaching with conviction in their heart. They're serving time in a pulpit. It's like a prison sentence until they can get out and they can run back to their world. God said, the only thing that will fix this is when my preachers can stand up with conviction about what they're going to preach and move my church again. My message today is two words, and I promise you I come with great conviction. I wasn't sure what I'd preach the first night when God started changing me, and then the second night, I didn't know until a few hours before church, and that's very unlike me. This message I knew two weeks ago before I got here. 
I'm preaching today two words. Dry places. Dry places. God bless you. Lift your hands and ask God to touch your soul before you're seated. God bless you, you may be seated. <clears throat> the author penned the words, every calamity covets a king. <clears throat> it's a simple phrase, simply means that every problem in life longs for an answer. Every plague in the emotions of man <clears throat> craves a genuine cure. Every malady devastating a life yearns for a solution to their struggle. Well, on this Pentecost Sunday, if every calamity covets a king, then to the brokenhearted I proclaim to you that Jesus is the master mender. To the destitute, I proclaim to you that Jesus is the genesis of all hope. To the diseased, I proclaim to you that Jesus is the healer of every disease. To the terminally ill, I proclaim to you that Jesus is the only possessor of life and time. To the doubter, I proclaim to you an indisputable Almighty, to the depressed, I proclaim to you that Jesus is eternity's unspeakable joy. And to the nervous, I proclaim Jesus to be the peace that passes all understanding. Ladies and gentlemen, there's nobody like Jesus. There's nobody like Jesus. There's nothing that can compare to Jesus. For every situation, for every question you can present, Jesus is the answer. For every need in this life, Jesus has become the solution. But I can tell you in my life, remember, I was not born in this. I, I didn't know this for years upon end until I came to Jesus a long way away. But uh, the greatest thing I think that God has ever become in my life is that when my soul was dry and thirsty, longing for satisfaction, Jesus became the water of life in my world. I'll admit that, that, that it was a little uncomfortable when I went to church with people like you the first time. I'd never been around church. I'd never been in a place like this. Our ladies, we had wooden floors in that little church that I came to, and all of our teenage girls wore these big old tall honking stiletto heels and and when the spirit would start to move and it sounded like somebody unleashed a herd of woodpeckers on that floor and all you could hear was shouting and dancing all over the floor I was it was a little bit strange being in a church with people like you brother white were you fearful I wasn't afraid of no man alive but y'all scared me to death were you nervous? Of course I was. Every one of y'all was crazy as a loon. Brother White, were you apprehensive? <laughs> Absolutely, because I didn't have a clue what y'all was going to do next. But the one thing that I noticed in that atmosphere that is that I suddenly felt dry. 
on the inside. I couldn't figure out what they were shouting about because I couldn't feel that. I couldn't figure out what those young men were running in church for because I couldn't feel that. And suddenly, Brother Troy, I felt a million miles separated from whatever it was they were. Even though I sat there in a body comprised of over 80% water, my soul felt parched and dry. And looking back now, I realize, Brother Ryan, uh, that it was because God was preparing my spirit for what was fixing to be preached because that preacher with jet black hair walked up to that pulpit, opened up this thing that I later found out was called a Bible. And he said, I'm going to be reading out of the book of Psalms chapter number 42 and he began to read as the heart panteth after the water brook so panteth my soul after thee O God my soul thirsteth for God for the living God hear me and hear me well that man knew nothing about me but he knew that on the inside of every human being there is something that will not Never be satisfied until God's spirit flows through them like a river. That's why God said in the word of the Lord uh, that the righteous shall be planted by it like a tree planted by the water. Hear me now when God saves you. God never carelessly casts you into a church somewhere. God's going to plant you where the river of God can flow. That's why I know some of you young jerks ain't got a clue about it, but the old church used to sing, though all hell assail me, I shall not be moved. Jesus will not fail me. I shall not be moved like a tree that's planted by the water. I shall not be moved. Our God is a river of healing. Our God is a river of deliverance. Our God is a river of anointing. Our God is a river of joy. Our God is a river of peace. That's why God never intended for church to be dry. God never intended for worship to be dry. God never intended for singing to be dry. He never intended your praise to be dry. God never intended your prayers to be dry. God never intended your preaching to be dry. I want everybody to hear me today. I'm going to elucidate on an incomparable fact for your mind. Uh, a dry saint is not the will of God. A dry soul is not the will of God. A dry service is not the will of God. Well, Brother White, you just don't know where I'm at. I'm out here in a desert somewhere. Well, I've got good news for you. God's word said, behold, I do a new thing. I'll make rivers in the desert. I don't care how deep your desert is. God can flood over you in the midst of your desert today. God never intended for a soul to be dry. That's why he's called the river of life. That's why he's called the fountain springing up. That's why he's called the well of living water because it's never the will of God for anybody's soul to be dry. And yet, because I've been a pastor for 40 plus years, when I look back over my ministry, I sadly have to admit that even spiritual powerhouses I've watched them devastated and dismantled before my eyes because they put 
themselves in a position to fight spirits they should never have to have fought had a battle with their problem was not a lack of preaching their problem was not a lack of good services their problem was not a famine of anointing their problem was not an absence of sensitivity and sadly too many saints even some of you that sit here right now you battle spirits that constantly plague your way but when I survey the problem the answer is almost always painfully obvious Uh, they positioned themselves to encounter unholy spirits because they were content to dwell in dry places God never intended your soul to be spiritually dry then what causes people even in the church to find themselves standing in dry places. Let me tell you when a person finds themselves in the church dry. It happens when you haven't shouted in a while because the Bible said, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. It happens when you haven't talked in tongues in a while because my Bible said, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water souls get dry when they haven't broken through in prayer in a while that's why Jesus told a woman in John chapter number 4 if you would have asked of me I would have given you living water when do souls get dry when you haven't wept on an altar with conviction in a while because repentant tears can soften the driest of situations You need to understand today that it is entirely possible to stand in the very presence of God and still be dry in your soul. My task today is to preach to you about the danger of those dry places that your soul learns to walk in. I've been sent to tell you that there is a deadly, diabolical danger that lurks in your spiritually dry place. In one passage, God mourns over what he had called the apple of his eye because of the dangerous position they had put themselves in. What made it so dangerous? God told them it was dangerous. God said, be a astonished you need to be horribly afraid why God because my people have committed two evils Uh, first they've forsaken me the fountain of living water and now they're trying to live with broken cisterns that can hold no water God was saying they forsook the flow of my spirit and now they're trying to survive spiritually in a dry place and I've come today to preach to somebody dry places are dangerous places We don't see dry places as dangerous places. We see them as neutral places. We see them as uh, places void of any real passion. It just, at least I'm still in church. At least I'm still coming to the house of God. What God understood and what you need to understand in this house today is that there are always unholy spirits that lurk in dry places. I've come to preach to you today about those deadly enemies that we'll encounter in our spiritually dry places. Look with me. Had a man named Joseph. He was the chosen of his father. And it's important to note that as long as he stayed in close proximity to his father, he was safe from all harm. But there came a day that Joseph stepped away from the father's touch. And according to the word of God, he went out into the wilderness. Now I understand Joseph never intended to stay in the wilderness any more than some of you who love God intend to backslide. But if you know the story, you know that it was there. Joseph was stripped 
of that coat of many colors. Evil men turned against Joseph and determined to destroy him. Joseph, once favored by his father, was sold into slavery. Joseph's life was devastated and he would never be the same. But there's something else we better make note of today. It wasn't just any random place where that calamity came on him. The Bible said he was in a wilderness at a pit and when you study the original word pit it means a dry well that's ran out of water a dry well there was no more water there I propose to you that Joseph encountered bloodthirsty enemies in a dry place be astonished and be horribly afraid because somebody's left the father's proximity and positioned themselves to encounter the enemies that always look lurk in dry places. Stay with me. If you could only see in the spirit world today, you'd understand what God said to be astonished and be horribly afraid because throughout scripture, I challenge you, throughout scripture, the most dangerous, the most deadly spirits that were ever dealt with were the ones that they encountered Countered in a dry place. The reason those enemies you encounter in dry places are so dangerous is because you position yourself. God didn't put you there. God told you to stay by the river. God told you to keep that well springing up on the inside. The reason the enemy you encounter in a dry place is so dangerous is because you have positioned yourself to deal with spirits that God never intended your flesh to try to fight. What you deal with in dry places is more evil. It's more unholy. It's more intent on destroying your soul. Brother White, I guess I just don't know why you think there's bad things at dry places. Jesus unfolded the revelation of why dry places are so dangerous. In Matthew 12, 43 when he said when an unclean spirit is gone out of a man that demonic spirit is going to roam through dry places somewhere already today because of time difference on this Pentecost Sunday demons have been cast out of people at my church in Texas just a short while demons will be cast out of people somewhere an unclean demonic spirit will be cast out of a possessed person but Jesus said when an unclean spirit is gone out of a man he walketh through dry places those same dry places that too many people are content to dwell in and according to Jesus when those demonic spirits are cast out today they're going to run straight to those dry places where people carelessly live without worship that should flood their soul without prayer that can carry them away without breaking through to a well of anointing springing up in their soul those spirits are going to run where nobody's talking in tongues and a river of water flows over you. I've come today to preach about dry places. That place you learn to live in when you think I don't have to be so close to God. Regardless of how safe you feel living there, I don't care how long you've just sat back and relaxed in the pew. You need to understand something with me. You will always position yourself to deal with demonic spirits found lurking in those dry places. When an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he's going to walk through dry places. That's why Jesus said, you be astonished, you be horribly afraid because you I have committed to evil you've forsaken the fountain of life and you're trying to live without water and you're trying to live in a dry place the reason Jesus said to be astonished and horribly afraid is because Jesus knew you were going to encounter spirits in those places how unholy are those spiritual encounters there the Bible we preach 
constantly unveils how vile they are that they stalk those living in dry places. Second Kings chapter number six tells the story of a woman who knelt no doubt loved her baby like I love my babies. Loved her baby like we loved your babies. Loved her baby like you. Anybody in this place, any mother in this place, any father in this place would love their baby. She fed it. She clothed it. She kept it close to her. No matter what went on in her world, she watched over that baby until one day, according to the Bible, there came a time the rain began to cease. And when the rain ceased for Falling. Her world became a dry place. Uh, hunger and famine roared through the land because the wells were all dry now. And while standing in that dry place, demonic influences changed a loving mother into a murderous cannibal. In dry places. She went from a doting mother to let's eat my baby today. All the unclean spirits you're going to encounter in dry places. She sat in my church. Once upon a time had a strong walk with God. Uh, she got lonely. She was a single mother. Two kids, beautiful children, beautiful. My Jesus, those children were beautiful. Big old chubby jaws. They were beautiful babies. Until all of a sudden, she decides she wants her a man. She'll do whatever she's got to do to get her somebody. I'm just going to go ahead and preach to everybody in the building. I'm not even sure why I'm going to do it. But the Holy Ghost just kind of nudged me and said, do it. You'd be better off lonely the rest of your life than to be hooked up with something that's going to destroy you. You'd be better off a single parent the rest of your life than let somebody lead you away from the truth so she backslides you know her she probably prayed through in your revival backslides goes out does her thing shacking up with this one and shacking up with that one and then all of a sudden one day I'm sitting at the house I get a call some few years later I get a call that said you need to, to be praying you need to come help we, we've got an emergency on our hands they've asked you to come pray and, and I couldn't figure out what was going then when I get to finding out they told me it was this lady that had left my church her, 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 her new relationship had broken up and when it did it messed her mind up so much that she determined that, 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 that God was done with her on this earth and those spirits begin to whisper in her ear and tell her the only hope for you and these babies is if you leave this life now. So that mama got up and took a big bottle of pain pills and mashed them all up and she put it in her baby's food and she put the rest in her food and did her best to kill herself and but how can you kill your own baby? She told us how. She said I was in a place uh, that something was whispering in my ear something was talking to me those beautiful big cheek babies paid the price for that woman that insisted on living in dry places lift your hands up and pray with me right now Can you perceive in your wildest imaginations what would cause a mother to kill her own family? I'll tell you what it was when a young clean spirit has gone out of a man. It's not going where worship saturates the atmosphere. It's not going where prayer springs up like a fountain. It's not going where anointing flows like a river. No, I'm going to tell you where it shows up. When an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places. God said, it should scare you 
to death to know that you're dwelling in such dry places. God said it. God said, be astonished. Be horribly afraid. Why, God? Because it should scare you to death to know that you're dwelling in such a dry place that you've given unclean spirits access to your soul. You've given demonic spirits access to influence your world. I'm talking about dry places where demonic persuasions feel free to whisper to your soul. You don't have to love the church like that anymore. You don't have to be loyal to a man of God anymore. You don't have to hold on to truth so tight. You don't have to be faithful to your family anymore. Hey, understand hell's never going to stop there. Those unclean spirits are never going to be happy until they shatter your world and eventually shatter every hope. If you ever coming back to God, let me show you how real this is. I've lived a lot of life, son. Let me show you how real this is. I sat in a service one night where an unknown man who we later found out was in bondage to alcohol and adultery. He was attempting to deceive that congregation. He, he stood up and tried to testify. Now, mind you, the pastor was an incredibly anointed man who operated with strong spiritual authority. And when this guy got done, everybody in the congregation was ooing and on because this guy had got up and told these unbelievable stories about what God did through him. And this, uh, nobody, nobody, none of us knew that this same man was caught up in a adultery. This same man was caught up in all these different sins. Alcoholism. Ah, that man walked, the pastor walked to the pulpit and I'll never forget it. When that guy got done, the pastor walked to the pulpit and said, sir, I'm so glad you've come here tonight. God's going to bless you just as soon as I cast that lying spirit out of you. And that man tried to act like he was shot and all of a sudden when that pastor stepped off that platform demons begin to speak out of this man with different voices to say we were stunned was an understatement but different voices would scream out telling this pastor I've been watching you I'm gonna get you someday I'm gonna find you where I can destroy you this pastor just grinned from ear to ear. He wasn't afraid of those demons. He wasn't afraid of that possessed man. He wasn't afraid of those voices. He had genuine spiritual authority, was incredibly anointed. And this precious man of God felt not one need to be afraid of these spirits. And they're screaming, we're going to come after you. We're going to get you. I'm going to find you somewhere and I'm going to destroy you. But this dynamic man of God laid his hand on this dude's head. And when he did, he cast out demon after demon after demon. It was one of the most amazing things that I had ever seen. It was a joyous victory to see what God can do with somebody that sold out to the cause of God but that joyous victory was short lived when you watch that preacher one year later go into a rough building program and when he got in that building program he was so overwhelmed with pressure that he quit praying he stopped operating with authority he stopped allowing the anointing to flow and he positioned him in dry places and deception found him there and he followed false doctrine allowing them to come into his pulpit and preach to the people and damage the church deception just like the dude a year before had cast out of him bondage found him there and he himself became a raging alcoholic to the point that he was seen one night by a backslider coming to the back door of a bar knocking on the door and when they opened the door the bartender handed out a, a, a fifth of whiskey to him 
out the back door as he stood there with his girlfriend. Adultery found him in that position as he eventually runs off with another woman that was a year older than his oldest daughter. How, Brother White, he was anointed. He had authority. He once prayed with power. How in the world did demonic spirits of deception and bondage and adultery find the I'll tell you how he cast those same spirits out just one year earlier and then decided he was safe to live in dry places when an unclean spirit has gone out of a man he's not walking in good services he's not walking through anointed preaching He's going to find you, even if you're sitting in a church, he's going to find you in a dry place before he positioned himself in a dry place and could cast those spirits out. But suddenly, he walked in dry places less than a year later and all three of those spirits come screaming back into his world. Sure, he still came to church, but what good is church if you're going to sit in dry places? What good will sermons do if you're just going to sit through dry places? What good is fellowship going to do if you're sitting in dry places? An amazing ministry was shattered when a man said I think I can survive he forsook the well of living water and tried to live my sisters that could hold that when I met him when I met him pastor there was no possession there were no demons there were no unholy voices crying out of him no, but that all happened when he stepped away from the floor of God and that preacher started walking in dry places. And when an unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he's going to walk through dry places. I need you to pray with me right now. Spirits right now, it's scaring me. Hey, I need you to hear the... I feel the ungodly residue of broken vows in this place. There's some of you in here, adulteries rising up as a stench in the nostrils of God associated somewhere, somehow. With the, hey, that's the kind of stuff you'll get into when you think you can live in dry places. I'm talking to spirits that are saying, I just don't think I ought to be so faithful anymore. You're in a dry place. I need you to pray for a fresh saturation of righteousness to flow in your world right now. Hey! Somebody in here needs to hear a prophetic word. God's getting ready to uncover your iniquity. You've allowed dry places to introduce spirits into your world. You've broken too many vows now. God said to be astonished. God said you better be horrified because you positioned yourself among the dangerous demonic spirits that are going to live in dry places. I sometimes wish, Brother Lambert, Brother Charles, I sometimes wish that people could see what a pastor sees when he looks at a congregation on a day like today. I wish I could take your heart in my chest and that you feel the helplessness that a man of God feels when he sees you being stalked by unclean spirits because you insist on living in dry places. Sometimes a man of God watches you for weeks or months or even years being tormented by spirits that drag you further and further away from the heart of the church until eventually you're just too weak to fight against that unclean spirit because you've stood in a dry place to I know what's coming I know what lies ahead because I've seen it for over 40 years walk with me to the deathbed of somebody who had claimed salvation and told me with her own lips God told me I had to speak in tongues once 
I've never spoke in tongues another time and I'm just as saved as you are. And I had to tell her, baby, you don't understand. God said, this is the rest. Tongues is the rest and the refreshing. But she fought against it. She despised me, Sister Lambert. She despised that church. She wouldn't come maybe once every six months herself. But if she heard visitors had come to our church, she'd get their number somehow and say, you need to quit going to that church. That pastor was just seen walking out of a bar on such and such a street. There was no bar there. I wish you'd walk with me into the room with her and hear in her voice as she screamed on her deathbed. They brought the hospital bed in, set it right in the living room, and she called and said, I need the preacher to come pray for me. She'd hated my guts. She'd despised me. But something in her was dangerous, uh, that was in trouble. And she said, I need the preacher. So you know what I did? I walked out of a pulpit on a Wednesday night, halfway through a Bible study, got my keys, got in my car, I drove in the house, and I laid on the floor and began to intercede for her. I would to God you could hear the fear in her voice as she screamed in her final moments of life, as she had pulled her feet up and screamed, demons are touching me. Don't let them touch Take me, demons are touching me. I laid on the floor begging God to touch her, but she had been in a dry place for over 30 years. Walk with me to rescue a backslidden woman, beaten and battered until her lip was literally torn away from her gum, and her lip was lodged underneath her chin bone her bare teeth jutting out into the wind her gums ripped and bleeding uh, she didn't start off that way no she was in a church and found her way into a dry place but remember the demonic spirits you're going to encounter in dry places are never going to stop they're just going to keep on pushing you until they take you where you can't come back the next thing we see is lustful spirits that cause her to leave her husband and three beautiful children in a church and runs off with a drunken playboy but unholy spirits wouldn't stop there after leaving her family violent spirits drove the man she was shacking up with to beat her constantly but unholy spirits wouldn't stop there the next thing you see is vile spirits dragging her from bar to bar to perform lewd acts or face more beatings the spirits wouldn't stop there how about perverted spirits that showed up causing drunken men to sexually abuse all three of her children in her own home but spirits won't stop there ultimately there came a day when I got the call and I had to press my way through that murderous spirit that had tried to kill her and I dragged her body now closer to death than to life away from the danger and I ran and I dragged her into a, a bedroom in that house and I hid her in the closet because she was so broken up and cut up I didn't think she was going to live are you listening to me it would be nice if we could have blame unholy spirits but demonic spirits are always demonic the problem didn't start with a lustful spirit the problem didn't start with a vile spirit the problem didn't start with a perverted spirit the problem didn't start with a murderous spirit it began when she sat in a church and positioned herself in a dress It started when she sat in a service just like some of you are right now. I don't need to be close to God. I don't need to pray through. I don't need to be faithful. I don't need to worry about my affair. You better because God's fixing to expose you. Hmm. 
forgive me if you think I'm taking too much liberty, but if I've got his spirit, I guarantee you he's telling me, you preach, preacher. You preach, preacher. I want to tell you, it began when she positioned herself in child places. It began when she sat in a church and learned to be content with no worship, no prayer, no conviction, no response to the preaching. But what she didn't realize is that dwelling in those job places were demonic spirits from that place that were going to slowly start ripping away everything that was righteous. How do you make that journey, Brother White? That's easy. You just linger too long in dry places. I want to preach to you now. It's more than your family just falling apart. Somebody's learned to live in a dry place. It's more than just a nasty attitude. You're dealing with demonic spirits in a dry place. It's more than just your honest opinion. It's a spirit that you're giving voice to in a dry place. Oh, yeah. Living in dry places can even distort all righteous reasoning and damage your hopes and your dreams. Just ask Moses. For 40 years, Moses' greatest dream was to go into Canaan. God leads them out of Egypt and says, we're going to go to Canaan. I'm going to take you to Canaan. We're going to go. It's going to be a land that flows with milk and honey, grapes uh, uh, the size of plums. There, there, there's going to be milk and honey in this land. You're going to go. You're going to go. You're going to go. And Moses, the greatest dream in life was to eventually, his spirit didn't waver when he stood at the Red Sea. God told him, stretch out your rod. His spirit stayed right when the people murmured for bread he just prayed and God gave him bread his heart stayed strong when the people murmured for meat he just asked God and God sent quail but in numbers chapter number 20 you see a picture of a grieving Moses whose world had been shattered because he allowed the wrong spirit to destroy his greatest dreams How did it happen, Bubba? I'll tell you how it happened. I'll tell you what caused him to go from being right with God from Ban to Canaan. The answer is found when the Bible tells us they were in the desert of Zin. In the desert of Zin, the Bible said there was no water among the congregation. Moses, whose spirit had been right through every test and trial. Moses, whose heart had stayed pure through every struggle. Moses, whose attitude was right before God in every situation, suddenly finds himself standing in a dry place and unholy spirits begin to whisper in his ear. Remember, the Bible does tell us that when an unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he's going to run to dry places. It was there standing in a dry place. Moses allowed the enemy to whisper in his ear. God said, Moses, you just speak the word and I'll give you water outside of this rock right here. But there was an unclean spirit, an enemy that was roaming in that dry place that told Moses, it don't matter what God says. You're sick of dealing with these people. You're tired of dealing with all their carnality. Instead of reaching for a new flow of God, why don't you just smite the rock in anger? And with that, the Bible said that Moses picks up that rod and he smites that rock and is instantly banned forever. going into Canaan everything he had lived for for 40 years was stolen away when he was in a dry place are you still not talking in tongues here today are you still not in a prayerful spirit here today do you not feel one ounce of conviction here today Everything he lived for for 40 years was gone just like that. When an unclean spirit has gone out of a man, you better be careful what spirits influence you in those dry places. And any wonder that God said, be astonished. You need to be horribly afraid of dry places. I 
Brother White, I don't have to be as intense. No, no, no. God's not going to make you stand in the flow. I don't have to be so faithful. No, God's not going to make you drink out of the well. But you better know when the unclean spirit is cast out of somebody today, he's going to come running where you're living. God, I wish that live stream wasn't on this morning. You listen to me. Let's talk about dreams. Several years ago, I was preaching camp, and at the end of each service, there was a young man that was bouncing around. That dude was something else. He had prayed with a statue. It didn't matter to him. He had a desire to be used to God, and I, he didn't need me to tell him anything, son. He was excited about God. Brother Ryan, he was there. He, he would lay hands on people. I, I, I was so impressed with him. That's back in the days where I preached five nights in a row. I was so impressed with this young man that, that at the end of each service, I'd have this young man whose greatest dream was to have a ministry and be used of God, carry the oil for me. As we'd walk through that sanctuary, that campgrounds we'd walk through, pray for the sick, we'd cast out devils, we'd lay hands on people. He was the epitome of potential and anybody of spiritual consequence could see it. To say the least, I was impressed by his heartbeat, his passion, his desire, and the camp meeting ended. About a year later, the pastor asked me to come preach in one of the cities in that state. I didn't much know anything about him, didn't know anything about much anybody in the district. I was just there and, and he asked me to come preach and when we get there, he said, Brother White, I need, I, I hear you started your ministry in jails, Brother White. I said, yeah. He said, would you be willing to go with me? Pray for a young man, backslider out of my church that's in prison. There's a prison out here on the outskirts of town. I said, sure. I have no problem going. I, I didn't know anything. So I went there, and he told me on the way how this young man used to be on fire, but he had lost his passion. So he said he was young, once tender, but suddenly he became unmovable. He said, Brother White, I, I'll never figure out what happened. He was sensitive, and suddenly he became stoic. He was thankful, and then he became indifferent. He said it's like he changed overnight, and when we got there, I was astonished. They led us to a cage away from Gen Pop. Uh, the, the, the general population they led us into a cage separate the guard told us the only way you'll be safe in here yeah, with this young man is to be in this cage and when I looked up the same young man that had carried my oil to pray for people that very year before was walking towards us with shackles on him and they opened the door and they took off his shackles and they shut the door and walked away and that boy immediately began to scream, you got to get me out of here. You got to get me out of here. I said, son, how in the name of God can you go from working altars with me at a camp to being in prison? And I found out that in his dry places he gave in to perverse spirits and started molesting the children that he was babysitting. How did you fall that far? How did you go from working with a camp of Angeles to molesting children on your way to a prison? I'll tell you how when an unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he's going to walk in dry places. He's going to find people who are content to live without a flow. They're content to live without water from the well. They're content to live without that mighty rushing flow of the Holy Ghost. Every spirit that was ever cast out, every spirit that had been bound in righteous environments, they're lurking somewhere in dry places looking for somebody to destroy. Are you listening to me? I'm begging you to listen to me. <coughs> Let me show you how real it is. 
when we got done visiting that young man, they come and said, your time's up. And it broke my heart to see that boy fall down to the ground and tried to pull his hands away. He said, they hurt me. They hurt me. No, no. And they chained that boy up and they dragged him out of that cage. And the other guard said, you two follow me. And he started walking us down this long corridor. It looked like three or four gymnasiums end to end. One long corridor. And there was bars. There were cells on the bottom and cells on the second story and cells on the third story. And we're walking and they had lines painted on that middle row that we were walking out. He said, you walk within the lines. You can't get out of there. Visitors can only walk within these lines in this part. So we start walking through there and all of a sudden, as we're walking down, down those painted stripes I hear somebody's hand preacher white you preacher white slow down a minute and look back at the guard cause I didn't I didn't know how to respond when I did the guard said straight to the cell don't get close to it perhaps he knows you and I got closer and closer and I couldn't see him until I finally got close enough. All I could see was a haggard, old, deranged man. He was grinning from ear to ear saying, Preacher White, Preacher White, Preacher White, Preacher White. I felt, I felt so awkward because I didn't remember him, Sister Lambert. And I said, I'm, Sorry, sir, I guess I don't know you. And he grabbed the bars and slammed his head against the bars and began to hiss. He said, you ought to know me. You cast me out in Indiana. What an unclean spirit has gone out of a man. He walks in dry places. It's time to pray. It's time to lift your hands high in the air and seek God. What an unclean spirit. What an unclean spirit. It's gone out of a man. Stand to your feet all over this sanctuary. I don't even want to give an altar call today. You ought to do that on your own. I don't care if you had to crawl through glass. You find your way to the presence of God right now. I don't care if you have to march out of a desert. You find your way to a place where God can help you right now. Draw places. Draw places when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man. When an unclean spirit is gone out of a man. Yala <laughs> moye. When the unclean spirit, when the unclean spirit, <laughs> I need you to pray today. Somewhere demons are being cast out on this Pentecost Sunday morning. The only way to avoid those spirits is to have a Pentecost of your own. Somewhere today, demons are going to be cast out in a great apostolic move of God 
but those demons are going somewhere. Pray, 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 pray. That's right. Some of you need to get it under the blood. Some of you need to get it under the flow right now. Maybe God can salvage that marriage. Maybe God can salvage that reputation. Maybe God can salvage that spirit that keeps going to wrong places on the internet. Maybe God can do it, but you got to come out of dry places. Be astonished. Be greatly afraid. You're in a dry place. Come on, get there. I don't care if you're in a desert. God said, I'll give you a river in the middle of a desert. Get there now. Get there now. Pray until you talk in tongues. Pray until your spirit's pure. Pray until your conscience is clean.
Come on, push till there's a flow. Push until there's a flow. The presence of God should never be a sprinkle. You've got to push till it's a flow. stand all over this house and lift our hands and pour out before the Lord right now. We stand all over this house and lift our hands and pour out before the Lord right now. That's what's going to affect dry places right now. Sit out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. I need somebody to affect a dry place right now. Well, that's it. How do your belly let flow rivers of living water? I need somebody to affect a dry place right now. Spring up, oh well. Spring up, oh well. Spring up, oh well. Come on, let the river flow right now. Come on, let the river flow right now. I refuse to leave this as a dry place. Come on, Moses, you can speak to the rock. Come on, Moses, you can speak to the rock. There will be a flow that takes place. It's all right. Pray for somebody around you right now. Put your hand around their shoulder. 
You don't have to leave dry. You don't have to live dry. You don't have to try to survive dry. There's a wellspring. It's available. Come on, speak to the rock right now. It'll flow. Speak to the rock right now. He'll water your well. Come on. He'll water your dry place. He'll turn it into a well-watered plain. That's it, Moses. Speak to the rock. You can leave refreshed. You can leave restored. You can leave renewed today. Friend to friend, husband to wife, that's fine. Neighbor to neighbor, that's fine. Pray for them. Connect them to something greater than yourself. Come on, create a channel wherewith the channel of water can flow to where they are right now. That's it. Pray, pray. Uh, let it flow out of you. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, God. let the well spring flow right now come on let the well spring flow right now hallelujah 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 I'm just going to tell you straight up unclean spirits are really uncomfortable in this kind of atmosphere let me say that again unclean spirits are really uncomfortable in this kind of atmosphere you know why the place that they are abiding is about to change the territory that they have been relegated to of dry places is about to change 
when you start pouring out, it causes unclean spirits to become very uncomfortable. That's why I'm glad in the service, in an altar service just like this, it didn't take music, it didn't take the praise team, it took the whole church that would go to prayer, that would start pouring out, that would create uncomfortable places uh, for unclean spirits. Uh, you know what I think we ought to do? I think we ought to pour out again and make them a little bit more uncomfortable. I think this ought to be a place of habitation uh, of praise. I think this ought to be a habitation of prayer. I think this ought to be a place uh, that becomes a well-watered plain. Uh, I think this ought to be a place of refreshing. Right now, somebody ought to pour out before the Lord and say, I want to make an unclean spirit uh, uncomfortable in this atmosphere. Uh, I think I'm just going to turn up the volume of the flow. I think I'm going to let it be a place of refreshing for my neighbor. I think I'm going to let it be a place of healing for someone who is in need in this place. Uh, I wish you would lift your hand I wish you would lift your voice. I wish you would talk in tongues and pour out before the Lord. Come on, saturate the atmosphere. Devil, you think you're uncomfortable now? You ain't seen nothing yet. Hallelujah. I wish somebody would open up your mouth and begin to praise him right now. As a breaking in the atmosphere that's taking place right now. That's all right. From the back to the front. If you feel like shouting, shout. If you feel like talking in tongues, talk in tongues. If you feel like rolling, do what you feel right now, but let the river flow. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I refuse to stay in a dry place. I refuse to allow spirits to abide in my world. I think I'll create an uncomfortable situation from the things that's been attacking my family. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Ooh, feels pretty good right now. I said, feels pretty good right now. No, Brother Lambert, I still feel a little dry. Why don't you pour out a little more right now? Why don't you pour out a little more right now? How many are thankful for a place of refreshing today? How many are thankful for a word today? Somebody ought to make your mind up. I'm not staying in dry places. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise him is coming very, very quickly if possible. I ask if you will, come on right now to the platform. And I just feel good in the Holy Ghost right now. I really do. See, what we're going to do, we're going to have a little fellowship right now. The devil hates fellowship. It feels a little strange right now. <laughs> I said, the devil hates fellowship. So they come to the platform. They're going to sing momentarily as we make transition. But I need you to find at least five, six, eight, ten people, man to man, lady to lady, hug their neck, tell them how much you love and appreciate them. They're glad you are to see them in the house of the Lord. Make sure, shake hands with our visitors, tell them thank you for being here today. Show me, I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. Amen, what a service. My goodness. I don't know about you, but I am leaving refreshed today. And if you aren't leaving refreshed today, there's just something wrong with you. You had an ample amount of time. And uh, I would not take for granted what we felt today. Amen. God moved in this place in such a strong way. Uh, spoke a, a direct word through bishop how many is glad amen for a direct word today amen it's been such an honor to have bishop and sister white with us and lincoln of course as uh pastor i mentioned earlier we're so glad to have them uh you know if they want to stick around we're okay with that uh we're, we're all right with that idea but uh, make sure before we get out today to let them know how blessed we were to have them here in Iuka. Amen. You may make your way back to your seats. Slowly but surely, I know there's some good fellowship going on. And we just love fellowship. But you may make your way back to your seats. We're going to ask Sister Lambert to come up. This is our pastoral anniversary weekend. We are celebrating 18, 18 fabulous years of ministry from Brother and Sister Lambert in Iuka, Mississippi. Amen. We are so thankful for them. I tell you what, and you may be seated. Uh, we're going to have a presentation for them. But I tell you what, if, if you find fault in Brother Lambert and Sister Lambert, amen, that too. But if you find fault with Brother Lambert or Sister Lambert, 
Number one, you got a devil in you. And number two, you are not studying their lives near the way that you should. Anybody with any bit of sense inside of their mind, if they were to truly watch Brother and Sister Lambert as they go through their life, there's not a fault that you can find with them. Amen. I am so thankful that God has placed me and my family in this church and gave in, uh, us such a wonderful pastor and pastor's wife. We've seen it even as late as this week. Uh, they've got so much going on around this church, but at the drop of a nail, at, at just anything, they're ready to serve the church. Uh, of course, uh, and it's been going on since before I came here, but since I've been here since 2010, uh, pray for pastor because I know it's a constant building program. And uh, that's a testament, though. We, we, we either don't have enough room in the foyer or we don't have enough room in the sanctuary or maybe we don't have enough room in the parking lot. And that's a good thing to have, but it's been a, a constant building program. And they've given themselves to the physical church They've given themselves to this building, but they've also, they would leave a work day and drive hours away to hospitals, to surgeries, to appointments. And there's people in this house shaking your head because just about every one of you have experienced that. And we are so thankful for them, the ministry that God's placed on them, the anointing. Why don't you just give them another hand? We want to give honor where honor's due, and we believe that they're worthy of double honor. We are so thankful for them. Amen. It's been 18 fabulous revival and anointed filled years. And uh, we're believing for however many until the Lord comes back again. Brother Brian's going to come real quick with a presentation for them. I'd like to ask for the ministry and church board members to come to the platform, please. While they're making their way, uh, personal testimony from, from my family, uh, we've had many times when Brother and Sister Lambert would be, they'd be in the middle of vacation. Uh, one time we were in Cincinnati, Ohio, Alex was having surgery, and they were on vacation, and on their way home from vacation, they came to Cincinnati, Ohio to visit us, to be with us, have dinner with us, and that's what our pastor does but we need to honor our pastor and pastor's wife for the sacrifice that they give to each one of us here in this church uh, there's been many other times and I'm sure everybody here could testify of how they have been there for you when you in the time of need and um, we got a presentation we want to make to them I believe all the board and the ministry is up here uh, Contained in this envelope is a five-day, all-expense-paid vacation for Brother and Sister Lambert, anywhere that they want to go. And I want you to take a good look not at Brother Sister Lambert, but at every other face on this platform. And the day they leave town, if you need something, you call on them people. Do not call Brother and Sister Lambert. If it's an extreme emergency, you get in touch with one of us, and we will get in touch with them. But they need time away to enjoy themselves and enjoy peace and quiet. On behalf of the church board and the church family, we love y'all. I don't know that I can either. I remember is a very special day because I remember sitting in Pizza Hut. I was reminded yesterday when we were sitting, you were sitting at the end of the table and I was sitting on the corner because I remember that telephone call. We were sitting together eating supper 
received a telephone call from here asking him to come try out for the church. I also remember next week would be the week at junior camp. My wife was helping take care of things. She was working at the dorm and so on. And I was just there having a big time. And they called me on Tuesday night, I think it was Brother Brian, if I remember right. It was senior camp. They were used to do it reverse, senior first and then junior. But anyway, uh, Brother Derek Killingsworth was there. Uh, Brother Mark Winters, if I remember right, was there and their wives. And uh, we were all standing there, Brother Brian, when the telephone call came in out by the door of the dining hall, saying that I had been elected as pastor of this great church. I'm blessed above measure way beyond my deserving I, I, w I told all of them matter of fact I put it on messenger too today is not a celebration of William Lambert or Sister Lambert today is a celebration of IFUBC family because this is not a one man band this is a church family that's working together for the kingdom of God thank you for your help thank you for your investment Thank you for allowing us to love you and you loving us. We sure do love you. Thank you, and God bless you today. Amen. You may be seated momentarily. And as for what Brother Brian said, I just want you to know that that will be strictly enforced. And if you do not follow those rules, we will figure it out, and we, we will pray. Amen. We're so thankful for them. You know, I could go on years and years and years worth of testimonies of the love that they've given me, as could every individual in this church. Uh, obviously, you've come here and you felt such a great love for them and the church, too. But we are just so thankful for that. Amen. Why don't you just give them another hand? Thank you so much. Thank you all so much. Amen. Now, what Brother Brian didn't mention was within that five-day all-expense-paid vacation, they have bought a suitcase large enough to put me in it. And we've arranged all of that, so. Wishful thinking. Anyhow, to celebrate our, our homecoming weekend, we are not having service tonight. Spend time with your family. If you want to come to the church and pray, that's always a great thing to, to happen. Just because we don't have service doesn't mean you can't be spiritual. Uh, but we will not be having service here tonight. There will be a lunch immediately going on downstairs. All right. This is your chat. has asked that while they're preparing to, to go ahead and fellowship. There's nothing wrong with some fellowship. Uh, but if you've ordered a plate, then that will be available downstairs. That is a paid plate. Uh, there might be some extra. If you maybe you didn't order a plate, you can ask Sister Chastity. Uh, but I am not sure of that. Um, but we do have prayer meeting going on tomorrow night at 7 p.m. We're going to come cultivate this atmosphere. And then we have midweek service going on Wednesday.